Hi, I'm Sultana. Sultana Jones. <laughs> I just want to let you know that I'm reading Innocent Blood, A Story of Redemption. It's available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and um, Zulon Press. So, I'm going to start reading for the rest. Um, Clint is really going through a struggle. He's hearing a, a voice that's saying, uh, why are you persecuting me? He's had a live abortion. Um, there are things that are going on with Ted, um, with between him and Ted, his his co colleague, and um, I'm gonna go ahead and start reading to find out what's next. I'm in chapter four. One time I was on a date when the voice spoke to me, and I hollered for it to stop bothering me. The woman I was with jumped up and left quickly. <laughs> I didn't blame her. I would have left too. It's been four months since I started hearing the voice. I can't take it anymore. I've got to have some answers. On the counter, from a pocket of odds and ends that I had emptied out months ago, lay the paper with a phone number on it. I smiled. It was a number of the little waitress had given me in front of Isaiah. I picked up the phone, took a deep breath, and dialed. I was hoping that she would pick up. It rang. Ooh. It rang again. I was just about to hang up when, hello? Uh, uh hello? Uh, is this Katrina? Yes, it is. I felt a bit awkward. I never had trouble asking a girl out, but for some reason, this felt different. Uh, uh this is Clint. You gave me your number at the restaurant? <laughs> I remember. I was hoping that you would call. How are you? I let out a tiny breath. I didn't realize I'd been holding it. I'm fine, fine. Um, look, I, I was wondering, uh, I paused, if you would like to meet me tonight. Sure, where? How about the robin's roost? Say, in an hour. That sounds great. See you there. Suddenly, my spirits picked up and I started getting ready. I changed into some jeans and a black t-shirt. I heard the voice again. Clint, why do you persecute me? I stumbled back, knocking over a plant that was on the counter. I put my head hands over my ears, but it didn't it did not help. I grabbed my keys and left. In the car I turned the music up to drown out those words that seemed to echo inside my head. I reached the robin's roost first and went inside, waiting for Katrina to come in. The songs beat with, with the lights. The place was loud and smoke-filled. I needed answers. I am a logical person, and something illogical was happening to me. I needed some answers quick. I don't pray. Never, ever have I prayed before, but for some reason, in this loud environment, I uttered my first weak prayer. God, give me some answers. Katrina walked in. She was beautiful. She was dressed in jeans with a pink top. Her hair lay on her shoulders, giving her a sweetness that accented her smile. I walked over to her and extended my hand. She gently took it. 
I led her to our table. Why did you come? She smiled. <laughs> Why did you call? I don't know. Really, I admit it. I was looking for something. I went back to the original question. Why did you come? I felt that you needed answers. Did a double take. Excuse me? I felt God say to go to you. I ignored the reference to God. Uh, yeah. Let's order. Are you hungry? A little. Maybe just an appetizer for me. Chips and spinach dip sounds good. I signaled to the waiter who came right over. What can I get for you? I placed our orders. She would have the chips and spinach dip and I would like the buffalo wings, please. I glanced at the menu. Oh, and two iced teas? Katrina nodded her head and smiled. I shifted in my seat. So, tell me, how long have you been working at Mama's place? Her smile was enchanting. Let's say I washed my first pot of green standing in a chair. <laughs> really? That young? So, you can cook, huh? You might say that. I notice you like homemade biscuits. I've been making those since I was seven. God, I must have eaten five of them myself and Isaiah ate three that day. Boy, were they good. I think she blushed. Thank you. I believe I'm a master at making them by now. Would you be willing to teach me? the art of biscuit making. She giggled. Sure, I'd love to. So it's a date then. Let's say tomorrow. If you're brave enough to come, I'm brave enough to teach you. <laughs> yes, it's a date. Katrina and I started hanging out whenever she was not working. It was the best two weeks of my life until one night it happened. I was with Katrina on our way to dinner and the voice spoke to me. I threw my hands over my ears and shouted, Stop it! Katrina froze. What is it, Dr. Clint? Stop what? We were on our way to the Robin's Roost. I know she thought I was crazy. Uh, I regained my composure. Um, look, are you hungry? Not really. I just ate. I looked around. Could we skip the robin's roost and go walking downtown? Sure. So we climbed into my Mercedes and we drove off. So what's going on with you? You look like you, you were in pain. I didn't say anything for a moment. I, I, I need to know something. Are you, I paused. Uh, uh, Christian? <laughs> she laughed. Yes, I am. <laughs> what? I thought you were going to ask some hard question. Why did you ask? Well, don't think that I'm crazy, but I paused again. I keep hearing voices. Well, not really voices, but one voice. Well, it's time for me to stop at this point. 
and I hope that you're able to read with me Innocent Blood, A Story of Redemption. It's a book that I read, um, that I've written, and um, I will read more. I hope you join me. God bless you. I love you. And Jesus loves you. Bye-bye.